and welcome to another episode of our Frequently Asked Question series. In this week's episode, we're looking at a variety of different questions from cat cable options to fisheye cameras. So let's get started with question number one. What is the difference between Cat5, Cat5e and Cat6? Cable technology is in a constant cycle of upgrade and improvement. The three types of patch cable mentioned in the question are the three most common types of cable you will come across. And the main difference between them is the rate at which they can transmit megabits per second. Cat5 can handle up to 10-100 megabits per second speeds at up to 100 megahertz. I know those numbers are confusing to a lot of people, but what they basically mean is that Cat5 is old and obsolete. If you're looking to buy an IP camera system and the cables you already have are Cat5, you're going to want to look to upgrade to one of the other two cable types. One is Cat5e, which is the most common and widely available type of patch cable and can handle up to 1000 megabits per second. Also, unlike Cat5, Cat5e is designed to prevent crosstalk, which is where signals from different channels overlap and interfere with each other. The final option is Cat6, which is designed for networks running Ethernet speeds up to 10 gigabits at 250 megahertz. Plus, the Cat6 cables are even better at preventing crosstalk. Now, for most small system users, you won't really notice much difference between Cat5e and Cat6, so it doesn't really matter too much which one you choose. But if you're sure your network has gigabit speed, or you're doing a new build slash renovation where you want to put cables in the wall and future-proof your network, then Cat6 is the way to go. Question two. I'm looking at two different cameras, one optical zoom and one digital zoom. What's the difference and which is better? Right, first off, the difference between optical and digital zoom is simple enough. Optical zoom is where the glass inside the lens moves forward and backwards to change the focal length of the camera. So, if you see a camera with the word verifocal in the title, that is basically the same thing as an optical zoom. The other option is digital zoom, which is actually better described as cropping rather than zooming. This is because when you digitally zoom an IP camera, the original image is cropped into, that cropped image is then scaled up to the size of the original image, which creates the illusion of a physical zoom. The big problem with the digital process is that it stretches the pixels that make up the image further the more you zoom. This causes heavier and heavier pixelation, which quickly destroys the quality of the final image. This is why when picking IP cameras, always look for a good optical zoom or verifocal range over a good digital zoom range, as verifocal and optical zoom will give you the best performance with the smallest amount of resolution loss. Question number three. I'm thinking of buying a fisheye camera to record a large space with as few cameras as possible. Is this the best option? Now, it's understandable for people with very little knowledge of IP cameras to see fisheyes with their 180 to 360 degree field of view as revolutionary and as the easy and affordable option for their IP camera setup. But when you look closer, a lot of the positive features of fisheye cameras become negatives when you try to use them like regular IP cameras. For example, most fisheyes have a 5 to 12 megapixel sensor, which sounds impressive, but due to the panoramic nature of the recording and the de-warping technology used to turn it into a rectangular video, the resolution of the final recording is greatly reduced. Another example of a positive that turns out to be a negative is the idea that fisheyes give the largest amount of coverage possible from a single camera position. This is true, but the key word there is coverage. Fisheyes are great at covering a scene and for seeing people move from point A to point B. But because of the huge field of view and the previously mentioned resolution drop, you will struggle to identify details like facial features from a fisheye camera. These two reasons and many more are why we suggest not to use fisheye cameras on their own. The only way to really use a fisheye is in conjunction with several fixed focal length cameras like a 4mm bullet or a 6mm dome that are focused on areas of interest within the scene that your fisheye is covering. This then allows you to cover the broader movements pre and post an event using the fisheye while still being able to capture detailed close-ups of the event using the 4mm and 6mm cameras. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking the Use IP logo here. Check the description below for links to our Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Follow the link here for our web shop and if you want more videos like this, check out the playlist up here. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.